along from that area. There's a certain something that has to be discussed. Two things about Donald Trump that no one's talked about. You know, he's been in the public sphere for over 40 years. He didn't just appear on the scene uh, six months ago. He appeared as a candidate six months ago or so. But you've known Donald Trump for, what, 30 years, 40 years as a showman, as a brass showman, the art of the deal. Uh, you want to call him a guy with beautiful women, big buildings, limousines. He was always out there. He was always over the top. He was always bigger than life. You've, he's been in the public eye forever. You know, I could say, like, in the sports world, there are people who, who approach this but don't achieve it for this length of time. Don King, for example, the boxing promoter, was big for a long period of time, right? Bigger than life. I'm trying to give you an example. Big people, bigger than life people. He's one of them. He's known in America. Now, enter Michael Savage. Obviously, he didn't know me from a hole in the wall until he decided to run for office. Did he or didn't he? I don't know. I was on the radio in New York on another station for years. In another time, he must have occasionally tuned on the radio and heard me. Then I remember once he came on this show, and we don't have that interview. Robert, ask Doug to find that up in the archives. I don't remember when it was. It was not one of the ones we played last week of the, of the archival stuff. He came on the show the first time, and he said, I don't even know what the issue was. He said, well, you, you're the kind of guy who speaks what's on your mind, Michael. That's just what he said to me. So being from New York, he knows my type. He's a man who can read people quickly. And he knows that people who speak their mind are, on the one hand, good allies. On the other hand, terrible enemies. He understands that. And in that sense, I'm surprised he still, he still comes on the show. <laughs> no, I'm not surprised at all. Because he knows that I know that... Um, yeah, of course, there's hyperbole, and I know that all men will fail us. I get that. Of course, there's hyperbole, and all men will fail us. And, of course, he repeats the same slogans, make America great again. But how many times do I have to say to my audience, I'm almost pleading with you. He was on last Tuesday. We had a substantive interview, Robert. Remember? There were four or five questions. I think I still have them somewhere. somewhere. And they were very specific. Did anyone quote them? No. Did you see it on any of the sites that like to say that they're political? Did you see it on Politico? No. Did you see it on any of the, of the so-called conservative sites? No. Did you see it quoted by Newsmax? No. Did you see the interview and his questions and answers quoted by any of the other sites who claim to be conservative? No. Now you know why he comes on the show. Because he knows I'm different than all of them, and he knows I'm an outsider. I'm an outside man. I'm the outsider. Anyway, enough said, important that I now play something for you that needs no introduction. You're going to hear it, and you're going to compare it and contrast it with Donald Trump's reality in clip number one. I want to ask of each of you, is that you pray. That you commit today, every day from now to election day, to lift this country up in prayer. To spend even just one minute a day saying, Father God, please. Continue this awakening. Continue this spirit of revival. Awaken oh the body of Christ that we oh might God. pull back from the abyss. Oh Lord. We are here today standing on the promises of Second Chronicles right, 7 take a walk, Johnny. Get him off the stage. Give him the hook. Who does he think he's kidding? Who does he think he's kidding? Are you kidding me? You know, anyone who has real faith doesn't have to exhibit it like that on the campaign trail. In fact, those who do are to be distrusted as far as I'm concerned. I haven't heard Donald Trump waving a Bible and swearing about uh, the, the Lord's... Uh... You know, this is getting low. Cruz is getting lower than ever. And I think it's time for Cruz to cruise off into the sunset because he went directly from Canada to Harvard and suddenly developed a Texan accent. Now he's suddenly developed an evangelical uh, bent to his delivery. Anyone who comes knocking on my door with an overly large Bible, you know what I do? I keep the door closed. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Just another manic Monday. <laughs> Here is the interview. If I were to summarize Donald Trump's interview appearance on my show in the last hour, and I was a newsman, Trump says campaign is as tough as building in New York City. I mean, that's a heck of a headline. That should be screamed across the country. He's working harder than I've ever seen anyone work. They're all working hard. God bless them all. I couldn't do it. How many years have I said to you I'm not made for politics? This campaign has proven that to me in, you know, in a magnitude I can't even describe to you. If ever I ever even entertained it, which I haven't in 10 years, in the beginning, you know, in radio, you all you get the uh, initial pop popularity and you think that you're bigger than you are. And everyone in radio in the beginning has the adulation, which they never had. They suddenly think they're going to run for office. Well, I got over that about 1996. The thing is, I'm just not made for it. Look how, remember when he came on the uh, air the first time? I said to him something about the stamina. I think I asked him, how are you going to do it? How are you going to hold up? He's not a young man. And then he was holding up, and I said to him, how are you holding up so well? What's your secret? He said, I guess it's just genes. Remember he said that a couple of interviews ago? Amazing, isn't it? Well, you know, look, I'm on his side, and uh, he's the first candidate I've ever backed, I think, in my entire – I don't know if that's 100% true. There may have been one or two here along the way that I may have uh, backed – I generally don't, but um, I feel he's the only one who could take on the opposition and, and crush him in plain English. Perfect, no. Uh, socially liberal in some areas, yes. We're going to say to you he isn't? Of course he is. He doesn't pass the litmus test, I get it. The, the great litmus test that's enabled you to lose every election in your whole life. Going down in flames, you know, save your Confederate money, the South will rise again. You may as well print up money called purest conservative money and pass it out amongst each other. Special bills, purest conservative money. We believe in this, that, and the other thing uh, on principle, but we don't follow it ourselves. <laughs> yeah, here's what we believe in, but we don't practice it. Then we got him with the Bible, with the eyes rolled in his head. He may as well hold up a snake and drink strychnine, the other one. And it was all going to happen tonight. Let's take some calls because ultimately you're the judge. WFTL in Fort Lauderdale. Joe, what's on your mind, Joe? Uh, yes, I'd like to make an observation, uh, which is common with also you. Uh, there's a streetwise intellect that Donald has and also you have, highly educated, highly intelligent, and that ability to be streetwise without the teleprompter uh, is, is the reason that people pay attention to it. And, uh, and he, he talks in, in words that is common but in a, in, in a good sense, comment. And uh, that, that's my point. If you can walk with kings and never lose the common touch, then you will be a man, my son. Remember I read the Kipling poem last week? Yeah, absolutely. And um... Well, thanks for the call. See, this is the beauty about talk radio. It's my mother's dream, may she rest in heaven. She was on the phone all the time when she wasn't cleaning or cooking or this or that. But her dream, she could have nine people on the phone at once and hang up what she wants. My God, this is like going to heaven <laughs> without having to get there. <laughs> I do have the best job in America, by the way. I know you don't want to hear it. Oh, it's hard work, but I, it's the best job in America. Who would, want to, who would not want this job? I have a friend who's very wealthy, and he always tries to get over on me by saying, oh, what you do is very hard work. It's like a, like a put down. Why do you have to say it's very hard work? I said, I'm, I'm making a difference. What do you mean it's very hard work? What do you want me to do, go golfing? That's your idea of living? Anyway, you know what I'm saying. What did you think of uh, the interview? Is he going to win or what? What do you think is going to happen in Iowa or what? What does this tell you about Donald Trump that he called me before the show to be on the air? And then we have other sound to play. Oh, my God. I don't want to play Tr Ted Cruz again. How did you feel about, no, let me ask that again. How do you feel about Ted Cruz in what he said 
I think you have to play it again. Play clip one again, Robert, just for a few minutes of it, a seconds of it. I want to ask of each of you, is that you pray. That you commit today, every day from now to election day, to lift this country up in prayer. Yeah. To spend even just one minute a day saying, Father God, please, oh. continue this awakening. Continue this spirit of revival. Awaken the body of Christ that we might pull back. That's it. Goodbye. Goodbye, Charlie. Now, I'm nothing against evangelicals. They are the, I think they're my P1 audience, incidentally. They love me, or they wouldn't listen to me. But I don't wear my religious beliefs on my sleeve like this man does. This is an embarrassment now. This is, a, you know, I jokingly call it the Caucasian Caucus today, but there are other ethnic groups. There are other religions practiced in Iowa, so far as I know. It is not illegal to be Jewish in Iowa. So far as I know, it is not illegal to be Hindu in Iowa. I think that you're permitted to practice Buddhism in Iowa. As so far as I know, there may be one or two mosques in Iowa. There may be atheists permitted somewhere in Iowa. How dare he inject religion into politics like this and expect us not to react to that? I'm sorry, that's my opinion. Is there an evangelical in the audience who has an opinion on this Ted Cruz yuck moment? of rolling his eyes to heaven and, and doing a thing like this? Sorry. Yes. That's what I want to talk about. What do you want to talk about? KVOR. KVOR Radio. James, welcome to the Savage Nation topic, please. Hey, yes, Mike. Uh, my topic is going to be about blacks who support uh, Trump. And the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are going to be surprised how many of us do support Trump because he's a visionary. He's not milk toast to sing a script that someone else wrote. He says from he talks from his heart, and that's what we want. We want a leader. Jay, like James, I, would you consider yourself to be a middle class, uh, econo you know, socioeconomically? Yes, but I have to. Tell All right. You, so, I, so, so you're not you're not a poor guy. I mean, you worked your way up. You have a decent income, right? You have a a decent life and a decent income, correct? I, I start out in a family of sixteen in about a twelve hundred square foot house. I grew up dirt poor. <laughs> Did you say 16 or 6? My mother and father, counting them, it was 16. It was 17 and one died. Oh, oh, you mean you grew up in such a house. So you're not, that's not where you are today. No, no. I grew up in a family of 16, extremely poor, out of Kentucky, as a black family. And I crawled... And, and, and today, are you a married man with your own family, or are you single? Married man with my own family. I have a master's in physics, basis in engineering, and I have a doctorate in management. And people say you can't do it because you... Wait, wait, Jay, did you say a doctorate in what? I have a doctorate in management and a, and a master's in physics. Well, God bless you, man. You're a highly educated man, and that leads me to the next... It begs a question. You are a highly educated man. Y you know, you're not typical of, let us say, the demographic that you allegedly represent. None of us represent our demographic, but you know and I know that education level generally is associated with independent thinking and the ability to reason. This is not true for most people of any race. That is correct. You're absolutely correct. So having having said that, you know and I know what's going to happen amongst the, the, um, the others in all races. They're not going to even listen to what the candidates are saying. They're going to hear what they're supposed to think and go that way. And I'm afraid they're still going to vote for Hillary. That is correct. You're absolutely right. I have uh, liberal black friends who are going to go with whoever the Democrat is without ever listening to anything. They will not even debate the issue. They will just push that button in blind yeah. stupidity. Did you say you have a master's in physics? Did I hear that correctly? Yes, that's correct. My area especially is space systems engineering plasma physics. Unbelievable, because that's such a tough field. That is such a conceptually difficult field. That's something I was never good at. You know, I know what I'm good at. I know what I was bad at. That was not one of the areas I was strong in. How did you find out in the family of poor black people that you had a, 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 a uh, an ability in this area? How did you figure that? How that come up? This, that's a very interesting question. I'm going to tell you what turned my light on. My mother, didn't, she didn't get her uh, GED until she was in her 70s. She died at 87. She got a GED at 70, but what she did, she stayed home and made sure 
all of her kids could read. I was reading before I went to school. 